The Pentium Overdrive is finally back on my channel. You may remember the time when I straightened the pins of this CPU, which I found at a local scrapyard. Fortunately, I was lucky enough to successfully bend back all of the golden pins without breaking any. And the cherry on top was when the boot screen appeared. But there was a catch. My Pentium Overdrive, which should work at a frequency of 83 MHz, was working at 33 MHz only. But there is a good reason for it. The Pentium Overdrive from Intel shipped with an integrated heatsink and a detachable fan. When the fan is missing, the CPU underclocks itself by reducing the clock multiplier from 2.5 to 1. There are ways to mod the CPU to trick it into running at full speed. However, I would like to preserve the original look of the Pentium Overdrive. Thanks to Dan from Canada and his generous donation of a compatible fan, we can reunite this Pentium Overdrive with a fan that should unlock the faster multiplier. A system bus speed of 33 MHz should result in a CPU frequency of 83 MHz, the stock speed of this Pentium Overdrive. But we may also be able to overclock it to 100 MHz by using a system bus frequency of 40 MHz. The fan is equipped with three spring-loaded contacts that will touch the three gold-plated circles on the ceramic of the Pentium Overdrive. Using a simple clip mechanism, the fan is kept in place. This ingenious cooling solution does not require cables or fan connectors on the motherboard. The fan is powered by the 5 volt supply of the socket, which makes this CPU stand out from all the other cooling solutions. It just looks beautiful. The drawback is, however, that it is quite difficult to get a replacement fan. So thank you, Dan, once more for your help and donation of this hard to come by fan assembly. Now that the fan is attached to the Pentium Overdrive, let's get it installed in the Soyo 4SAW2 motherboard and see if it will work at its stock frequency. And it boots at a frequency of 83 MHz. Dan's fan is working. Now we are finally able to test the Pentium Overdrive on the Socket 3 platform and compare its performance to competing 486 and 586 CPUs. But before we jump into Tomb Raider, let's first have a look at some synthetic benchmark results. In PC Player, the Intel Pentium Overdrive scores 18.2 frames per second. That puts this CPU on par with a fictitious AMD 486 clocked at 143.5 MHz which means that the Pentium Overdrive can do 70% more work clock for clock compared to the AMD. In Doom, the Pentium Overdrive scored 35.3 frames per second. That is not particularly good. Doom doesn't seem to benefit a lot from the better architecture of the Pentium Overdrive. It is a bit slower than the Cyrex 5x86 at 100 MHz with all its enhancements enabled. And the mediocre results continue in top bench. Again, the Intel CPU finishes behind most of the other 486 CPUs. Despite the architectural advancements, clock speed seems to be the deciding factor in those benchmarks. With 83 MHz, the Pentium is hopelessly underclocked compared to some of the other CPUs. Unsurprisingly, in system information, the Pentium only beats the DX266, which is the lowest clocked CPU in the batch. An AMD 486 overclocked to 160 MHz is the fastest CPU for Socket 3 and tops every benchmark so far. In Speedsys, however, we do see the Pentium Overdrive beating the competition for the very first time. Even the AMD CPU, which is clocked at almost double the frequency, falls behind the Pentium. Speedsys seems to utilize some of the advanced features of the Pentium Overdrive, which most likely includes some floating point calculations. So far, I have mixed feelings about the results delivered by the Pentium. It is amazing to see it beating much higher clocked CPUs in one of the tests. But there are still the other four tests where the overdrive is not delivering a satisfying result. Let's move on to Tomb Raider and see how the Pentium overdrive performs in software mode first. At the lower resolution, we get smooth gameplay in the opening scene. It is difficult to tell the difference between this CPU and some of the higher clocked 486 and 586 CPUs. But I think we can all agree that at a resolution of 640 x 480, the game is choppy and not playable. Similar to all the other CPUs we have tested, this resolution is not recommended to be used on the Socket 3 platform. 
So let's switch back to 320 by 200. In larger areas, the performance similarities to 486 CPUs continues. The Intel CPU delivers almost the same performance as an AMD 486 clocked at 160 MHz. But if I had to pick the better performing CPU, then I would go for AMD. Amazingly, the overdrive can achieve a very similar performance compared to the much higher clocked AMD CPU. Unfortunately, we don't get a performance boost from the Pentium that I had hoped for. I think it is time to test this CPU in combination with a 3DFX Voodoo card. With a frame counter, we will be able to better assess the performance of the Pentium Overdrive. Let's start with a built-in demo benchmark. On one occasion we dropped to 23 frames per second. Not bad for 83 MHz, but not the best result we have seen in the previous videos. Undoubtedly, it is a very good result and for sure in the top ranks. However, a Cyrex 5x86 or an overclocked AMD 486 delivers a similar result. Let's have a look at the indoor caves where Lara needs to fight two wolves. While Lara overlooks the area on the platform, the frame rate drops to 20 frames per second. That is a good result, but again, not the best. The fight against the wolves is smooth and the frame rate remains close to 30 frames per second for most of the time. It is no surprise to see Lara walk across the bridge at 30 frames per second and overlook the area at 24 frames per second. The last scene is the fight with the T-Rex. Sometimes we drop to 18 frames per second. The Cyrex 5x86 clocked at 120MHz never dropped below 20 frames per second in this scene. So again, not a result that will top the charts, but still impressive for a CPU clocked at 83MHz. Tomb Raider limits the frame rate to 30 frames per second, which is unfortunate for the Pentium Overdrive because it might be able to achieve a higher average frame rate than other CPUs without it. But then again, the lows are the ones that affect game immersion and gameplay experience. So far, the Intel Pentium Overdrive delivers mixed results. Yes, it is amazing that this CPU is capable of delivering a similar performance compared to much higher clocked 486 and 586 CPUs. However, the low clock speed seems to hold back this Pentium Overdrive. At its stock frequency, it is hard to justify an upgrade unless you have a motherboard that does not support low voltages for the faster 486 and 586 CPUs. But this is probably a limited use case. I guess I spoiled what we're going to do next. Since the Pentium Overdrive's performance suffers from the low operating frequency, let's try to overclock it to 100 MHz. 17 MHz more doesn't sound like much in today's world, but it is still a 20% overclock. Unfortunately, those Pentium overdrives are very poor overclockers. Some do not even want to boot at 100 MHz and many others are unstable at that frequency. But we will try it anyway. The Scrapyard Pentium Overdrive at 100 MHz. I am really happy that the Pentium Overdrive completed all synthetic benchmarks at 100MHz. Could it be that I rescued a rare CPU that is capable of operating at 100MHz while leaving the voltage untouched? We will find out later, but for now, let's quickly go through the results. In PC Player, the Pentium Overdrive finally beats the AMD CPU by delivering almost an additional frame. Doom remains to be a challenge and the fastest clocked AMD chip remains on top. But the overdrive overtakes the Cyrex 5x86 and the 486 DX4133.
we see similar results in top bench and system information. But the biggest surprise was delivered in Speedsys. The Pentium Overdrive smokes the competition by scoring over 74 points. 14 points more than the AMD clocked at 160 MHz. Those results are a testament that this CPU should be clocked at 100 MHz, a feat that is not easily achievable because even my CPU is unfortunately not stable at this frequency. Even though my overdrive completed all synthetic benchmarks, it was a challenge to complete the Tomb Raider benchmarks. Nevertheless, I have most of the results, at least the ones I could complete. And we will only have a look at the 3DFX results. In the Tomb Raider demo, we dropped to 28 frames per second, the best result among all CPUs. Unfortunately, we see graphical glitches appearing, an indicator that this CPU struggles at this frequency. The fight with the wolves is also the best experience I have seen on Socket 3. We only drop to 24 frames when Lara overlooks the area from the platform. The rest of the fight is buttery smooth at 28 to 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, I could not walk over the bridge, because the CPU would lock up at random spots. I tried to save the game every time I got a bit closer, but after about 10 tries, I gave up. I am sure she would walk over the bridge at 30 frames per second and overlook the map at a very similar frame rate. And finally, the fight against the T-Rex, which surprisingly worked on this CPU after a couple of tries. Frame rate stays comfortably above 20 frames per second. We observe the occasional drop to 21 frames per second, but most of the time the fight scene renders at 25 to 30 frames per second. Once more, this is the best result we have seen among all other tested CPUs. Finally, let's have a look at the Tomb Raider demo benchmark results in a graph. The Pentium Overdrive is a top performing CPU. At 100 MHz, it renders the demo benchmark in the best way possible. If there wasn't a frame cap in Tomb Raider, the Pentium Overdrive most probably would outperform all other CPUs by a much larger margin. But even at 83 MHz, the CPU performs as well as an AMD 486 clocked at 160 MHz. It is a bit unfortunate that this CPU is unstable at 100 MHz. At 83 MHz, I would not recommend it for a retro PC due to its rarity and price tag. A486 from AMD overclocked to 160 MHz delivers comparable or better performance. If you want to play 3D games like Tomb Raider or Quake, get a Socket 7 motherboard with a Pentium or Pentium MMX. Nevertheless, I am still happy to own a Pentium Overdrive for the Socket 3 platform. And now I'm curious what you think. Would you prefer a Pentium Overdrive or is a fast 486 CPU good enough? If you prefer the Pentium Overdrive, I would like to know why. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And finally, I would like to thank all my Patreons for your invaluable support. And that is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.